Did you have time to review Pip's comments? I mean, I, you know, my I don't I don't have a format for this meeting tonight. I don't know whether anybody sort of wants to make a specific statement. My my feeling is um, I think Pip's recommendations are good, and um, that we should you know sort of give our support contingent upon them at least exploring those possibilities. Um, I, you know, as I said previously, you know, our input is, I'm sure, <coughs> heard, but beyond that, I'm not sure it means a whole lot. Um, but I do think that, that Pip's points about it being, mm -hmm. there appear to be other places where it could be more discreetly cited, mm -hmm. and I don't, I can't see any good reason not to um, at least point that out as something we would appreciate them exploring. Would you be willing to read what Pip's points are? Sure. Um, are yes. Uh, I don't know whether we have extra copies, but we can get, can, can, can yeah, we take that one? Could you just clarify what these were? This was information. Pitt, basically, Pip Pitt went and visited the site. You you were here last week when right. Pip stated that he felt that there was probably room for to locate the tower elsewhere on the property. And what he has done in the meantime has um, gone and sort of pasted that off or measured it off. And I, I, I you actually it, taped it. Tape. Yeah. Um, and I, if, do you want to just? Sort of clarify what your sure. I had the opportunity prior to the presentation last week to visit the site, and when I did that, I thought that there was an awful lot of room behind the buildings, and that that would really help screen the lower portion of the tower, which is this trailer, and there's some on the ground stuff, and three big concrete blocks that'll have the guy wires. Um, and hi, Jim. I just, when it comes, if there's a vote, when it comes, this the the actual letter can come from planning commission and select board. Independent. Yeah, one or the other. So I just and, and not to tell you, Jim, that you can't vote, but he's not officially a planning commission. He's yeah. development review board. No, yeah, he's no, both. He's, you he's are both. both. Yeah. We're all, yeah. or, uh, we were reviewing it today. She told me there were three. So, okay. Oh, um, well, Jim no, and Bill yeah, have to go away. Hope to God Jim is on the plan. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Really? I'm not? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've got some explaining? <laughs> he's been working. He's been working for. Maybe it was Carl I was thinking of. Carl, Carl said he was going to be here tonight, oh. too. No, Carl's only on the BRB. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. But Sorry. Carl does have this. Sorry, Jim. This, this is, is this the planning commission. And that, that does not yeah. relieve you of your duties as a planning commission member, <laughs> no, even I'm though Cynthia stated that. Okay, sorry. I'll just keep Would you like to join the, the commission? <laughs> <laughs> so without, without you know, being long, I'll try to keep it short. Um, it looked like there was plenty of room, especially when I heard 60 by 70 as the desired footprint for their tower and the concrete blocks for the guy wire. You know, and just back in there, my gut feeling was, geez, this is huge. There's hundreds and hundreds of feet back in here. So I had another opportunity to visit the site after hearing the response from the uh, Downs Rockland attorney, I, I forget her name, um, well, in any case, the attorney. Her response was that she felt that they had done their exploration in the back and there were no sites that wouldn't intrude into the 50-foot 
uh, wetlands setback barrier. The site plan that they provided indicated that 50-foot barrier. And I had the site plan in hand and a uh, 100-foot tape measure and just went in the back there and uh, measured two sites that appeared to me to be flat, accessible by vehicle, and uh, located such that they wouldn't interfere. There are many ways to get back to the rear part of the site where the solar panels are. Uh, they do want to have an access road, but there are several there. They're sort of indicated even on this site plan. There are two around. Uh, well, there are many ways to get back in. It's all sort of a flat, um, essentially gravelly <coughs> site. So with that in mind, I thought that you could find locations for the 60 by 70 cell tower that would certainly hide the base of it and perhaps even a little bit more of the tower with the hillside that's along Route 5 where the Friends Meeting House is. I don't know whether that hillside messes around with the propagation features of the tower, but I don't think it exceeds the height of the tower, so I would think not. But um, I just felt that her the attorney's response that any site would intrude into the 50-foot setback barrier and therefore require a wetlands permit delaying the process was not an accurate statement based on my site measurements. So that's what I have indicated here with a couple of diagrams where I just drew the size of two sites. One is 100 by 140 and the other is 70 by 90. And um, I drew them on their site plan. And then I got a Google, printed out a Google map and just kind of indicated them as two possible sites. There may be reasons why it wouldn't work, but I felt that uh, it wasn't given its appropriate consideration at the meeting. So what I lobbied for in my email was um, a statement from either Planning Commission or Select Board Planning Commission, because you know we're, that's my side of it, um, saying that I'd like to know why uh, what appear to be two appropriate sites with much less visual impact in the village are, aren't being considered. Did you email AT&T? No, I did not email AT&T. This is all in-house just to the Planning Commission and Select Board in anticipation of this meeting. So this is the first time that this is being talked about in public. And, and Howard, that statement is what I would like to see the Planning Commission and or Select Board say, which is, um, can this tower be located further, deeper in on the Basketville site because that would really mitigate its visual impact. Um, one thing I would suggest, that, that, and I'm, I'm not sure, but I think the lawyer mentioned it, was, you know, of course they're leasing this piece of property from uh, Basketville. If there were any objections as far as access on the site or any kind of, uh, you know, leave both of a and B on this illustration are kind of in that open passageway, you know, to the back area there. I, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm really just, you know, devil's advocate mm here, -hmm. just asking that question if that may have been a decision on Greg's part, uh, limiting where they were, you know, interested yeah. in having the tower sited on their on their property. Yeah. Uh, and, and if anyone's at, answered that question or can answer that. Don't, don't, so don't, don't know. Kind of I just know that, that it's, for, um, that? you know, she, the, the present, initial presentation did a good job of reviewing the significant um, inability of a tower in the village to conform with our zoning because we don't want a tower in the village by our zoning. And uh, it's such a clear statement in our zoning that I would just uh, like to think that the PSB would acknowledge that desire and that a sort of modest effort to mitigate its impact by just shoving it a little bit further back on that site, which I think would do significant, would have significant visual benefit. You'd see all of the base of the tower and its concrete guy wires and the electrical feed at the proposed location, and you wouldn't see any of that if you just shoved it behind the, some of the abandoned buildings or, or you know, underused buildings. And 
I think there's adequate area. And that 100 by 140, you can easily peel out 60 by 70 and leave plenty of room, in my opinion, to get vehicles through one side or the other of those access roads. So that's, that's the way I feel about it. It might also mitigate um, any of the health dangers that some of the people were worried about that were here at the other two meetings. They were worried about what might happen to people in the Mountain Falls departments, and if they were back farther, it might be better. Yeah, I, for one, just can't address any of that stuff because I don't know anything about it, and, and I just have my blind faith in those engineers that I hope are conscious human yeah, beings, I don't know you know, conscientious human it. beings, and, and doing their job. So I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. Either. I was just, you know, if you're trying to, love, to duck, and not yeah. get it may pressure. it may actually move it closer to the former daycare building, mm -hmm. uh, right. you know. So so in that case, it, it you know it may not have significant benefit in, mm -hmm. um, in diminishing its location or its adjacency mm -hmm. to dwellings. <coughs> you know, I, that, that aspect of it, I don't know. Okay. Alice. Yes, I was unable to attend uh, the last meeting, and was the question raised with AT and T? as to why they were not able to renew um, having the cell tower where it was and where it got degraded for one reason or another? Yes. Um, very basically, it's a, a matter of availability of bandwidth on the existing towers. Um, there are two different bandwidths that are commonly used for cell phone frequencies. And um, on the towers that they have been getting space from, um, Verizon owns those towers or, or is the substantial interest in those towers and wants to capitalize more on the bandwidth that's available. Because I get, uh, my understanding is that, you know, a tower is sort of licensed to have X amount of bandwidth in these two different ranges and no more. So in order for Verizon to take advantage of that, they have to push AT&T off. So they're continuing to work together, but Verizon has the sort of right to it, so. Is there any way that Mr. Shumlin might have something to say about uh, having persuading Verizon to allow AT&T to still have its bandwidth that it used to have? I, I think that he, did play a role in that already, and I'm not sure, sort of, I, I don't know the exact negotiations that went on involved in that, but my understanding is that, that the, the service was almost completely lost and reinstated somewhat, but the, the way AT&T put it is basically that, that whatever that agreement was could be overturned at any time. So, um, you know, I, <coughs> As Pip said, we sort of have to take it in good faith that they're doing what they can. I mean, obviously, AT&T is interested in providing a good service because that gives them a better product. Um, you know, if they could do that, I think they would, and that's what they're trying to do here. I think that the frustrating thing about this solution, as we talked about last time, is that it really only covers the village. And for people who are outliers, this is going to do little, if any, good for them. Um, and so, you know, I think that the other thing that I would like to see clearly stated in any statement that we make is, you know, just that we would like the temporary aspect of this to be as temporary as possible while they find a permanent solution to the problem. Because as the lawyer pointed out, temporary is temporary until they have a permanent one. So yes. there's nothing, you know, for all practical purposes, other than, you know, their motivation to improve service in the outlying area, there's no reason they can't keep this thing there as long, long as they want to. So, so is there any way of putting a time limit? No. no. None? No. So we, the, we would be stuck with it? If, it, you know, I mean, the, their, the, their assertion is that they are trying to um, locate a permanent tower within the area that will serve Putney in a greater way. You know, I, they're also I, I would attempting to negotiate with Verizon. So, 
I'm not sure they are. I think that I, I think that you know the the whoever the wisdom wherever the wisdom came from when when Unicell was divided was that new the the river was the division. So that's where the first sort of first glitch came was that all the infrastructure that had been built on the New Hampshire side, which was serving the Vermont side, became one company, i.e. Verizon, and AT&T got left with the other side. My assumption is they have other areas where they came out ahead, maybe up north, I don't know. But, um, you know, from a practical standpoint, that wasn't the greatest way to do it. Um, but now that's just what we have and what they have. So um, I, I, I think that, you know, this is more about a temporary solution for them for serving the village, which, you know, oddly enough, it, it appeared, at least from the people who, who were here last week, that although there are some in the village who have real service issues, for the most part, it's not terrible in the village. Um, but as we all know, once you get out of the village, it's terrible. pretty mediocre, if, if that, yeah. So, um, and, and had a question. <clears throat> This is actually just more of an administrative suggestion. It does get into sort of PIP's issue of just let them decide if it's okay or not okay. It has to do with, I'm not even quite sure if the electromagnetic fields are involved in this. I think they are. Is it, National Grid used to send a guy out for free to just measure any, any customer who lived along their transmission line who had a question about what the electromagnetic field mm -hmm. was could have them come out, and usually it turned out fine. But the town garage is right on the transmission line, and the firehouse is right on that transmission line. That electromagnetic field has gone up on the hot days because it's related to voltage. There'd be more current through that when people had their air conditioners on. If we could get that done for free at the garage and the firehouse, and just know what that is now as a baseline, Mm -hmm. It might be interesting to have. That, that was my only suggestion, especially. I took National Grid no longer administers this transmission line. I found out some other, they've subcontracted to some other company, and I'm sort of following up. But it, I don't know who it is, who the contact person is at this point. Well, I, I, have, I think the, the concerns are a little different with the uh, and that's what I was thinking. telephone too. transmission, which is, a, 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 is the, the mi microwave. Technologies, kind of which is, I'm just not sure that National Grid would have any kind of meaningful input on that calculation. But they might be able to measure. They, they could measure what well, the baseline is right. now. But my question, and Scott may be totally correct, I mean, the cell tower microwaves or whatever they are may have nothing to do with an electromagnetic field. I had just read some article that someone gave me. I didn't even know the source, so I can't. I'm not yeah. up to speed on this at all. It just crossed my mind, so I thought I'd throw it out there. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned this last meeting, and I just want to bring it up again. It seems like we had, as a group, various individuals expressed concerns falling along three or four lines, um, deciding that it was ugly, that 91 wasn't being served, that the outer reaches weren't being served, and there was probably another one. Oh, length of time. And as I said in the last meeting, I don't think that we're in a position to negotiate at all with the Public Service Board. They just want a yes or no from us. But AT&T wants us. So we may be in a position to, to negotiate with them. We may, they want our endorsement for some reason. And so we could say, yes, we're on your team as long as you agree to recite, as Pip said, or build a camouflage. Or, um, as long as you will refocus some of the cells on the Holland Hill Tower, you know, you can choose what conditions you want to put on it, but you could negotiate with AT&T and say, yes, we're on your team, yes, we will give you su your support if you will, one, two, three, and four. I think they're the people to negotiate with, not the Public Service Board. If they could simply move some of the antennae on the Holland Hill, I would think that they would have done that. Yeah, I don't know if it's yeah. possible at all. Daniel yeah, raised that's... it the last time. I've, uh, I'm not endorsing any of these. I don't yeah. know. I'm just saying that you as a group could decide what's really important for you and understand that you, you are probably in a pretty good negotiating position. 
you could at least ask for camouflage. Um, I think time frame is one of the issues because we have a limited time in order to respond to the PSB. Is that right? Yeah, within, within the next couple of days. Um, uh, I uh, I hear what you're saying. I'm not sure AT and T is likely to be a, a, any more. I mean, I, you know, I think the PSB is going to listen to us. Uh, you're right. We have negotiating ability with AT and T. Uh, you know, is that something that's sort of worth our while exercising? I'm not sure. Um, I mean, we could we we could try, but well, I don't know. Right. But I do know that the first discussion with them was for them to go through the local zoning process. That's what I told them they needed to do. But by statute, they don't. They don't have to, they, but they, they could they have. They have a choice. They could have if they wanted to negotiate with the town, I guess right. is what they I'm could trying have been to say. Nice. They could have, knowing that there was a process in place, that they yeah. could have come before the Development Review Board, they could have already had that hearing. Mm -hmm. And that's not the route that they chose. So mm -hmm. does that mean that we shouldn't contact them to try to negotiate? But I feel like that was kind of a negotiation of, you know, no, I'm not going to do any temporary tower permit for you as zoning administrator is what I told them. But we do have a process you can go through, apply, we'll, I'll put you before the development review board, and this is our guidelines, and they chose not to. Yeah, well, they wouldn't want to set that sort of precedent, you know. So the right. statutes specifically yeah. exclude them from having to deal with us. And that, 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 kind that of my is guess is that would be true with any negotiation with us as well, is that they'd say, you know, sure, that's a nice idea, but we're just going to submit our application and see what happens. Because, yeah. um, you know, I mean, they, they, I'm assuming they have enough pull with the Public Service Board, or, you know, not pull might not be the right word, but that they do enough with them so that they wouldn't have leased that land if they didn't think they could put a tower there. I mean, I mean you could call them and tell them the things that you guys talked about. You can draft see, our see response, what the response tonight is. Right. Right. and yeah. say, this is what we're going to be telling the Public Service yeah. Board as a two, we have jointly decided as Planning Commission and Select Board that we would possibly be. endorse this project with these things and these, this is what we're going to tell the Public Service Board, and then at that point say, is there room for you to change your proposal to the Public Service Board before right. it gets there? So when it gets there, I mean, it would only make their process easier, mm -hmm. I would think. Right. But, I mean, there's there's nothing saying we can't do both. I, I can yeah. call the attorney yeah. and ask them that. Yeah. Um, no, that sounds reasonable. Yeah. yeah that certainly that's can't. Me yeah, sure. certainly yeah. can't. They're either going to say yes or yeah. no. We have no muscle. <laughs> you have exactly. Muscle. No, and, 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 you know, it's a system that exists that we're sort of on the periphery of, which we might be able to influence, been but maybe not. Out of, you know, exactly. We don't want For the, the towns the, to be able to right. say no cell towers. Right. We don't want so. that. Yeah. I mean, I would suggest helping me draft what our response is to this because of the timeline, because we know we want to get this to the Public Service Board. Yeah. In the meantime, I can tell them what our response is going to be, and are they willing to try to negotiate that to prior tailor to it. To that, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Look, so I think to, can't do that. So to take Becky's points, um, uh, which I'm really trying hard to remember. It was um, the timeline. There was the, the, the known coverage from 91. Can't they put something yeah, short okay. of yeah, 90, 90 90 91? Yeah, 91 is really they, surprising. Um, the, the issue about what the benefit of the tower in the village is, I don't know whether that's an appropriate area for us to respond to because I'm not an AT&T customer. Yeah. You know, it doesn't affect me at all, one way or another. Yeah. Um, but, uh, the, the, you know, whatever obligation they have to, you know, to, to, to 911 or to emergency services or some they're sense not, of, you know, human good. That, that, yeah, uh, you they're know, so, so this isn't the response, you know, and this yeah. isn't, this is like another, this is a tower in an area that isn't significantly underserved. You know, there, there are people here that will benefit from this, but there are people in town with AT&T phones yeah. that, that, that work, you know, maybe not, maybe not as well. Yeah. You know, so I guess I would, I personally don't know how to 
succinctly and with any force talk about the fact that their service in Putney isn't um, as good as AT&T customers would like it to be. So, no so, so, I was, so I was going to sidestep that issue. That's yeah. right. what I'm trying to say. And, it's pointless. Right. That's why they're doing the, 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 the uh, camouflage issue, it's um, kind of up in the air. I'd almost rather see, well, it's, I don't know, you know, it's the one reference in my mind is the tree-covered uh, tower on Black Mountain go, right. coming you know, north on the interstate, yeah. which I know, I know it's there. I look at it every time. And well, I was know, just it, thinking it, in terms of a box around all the machinery towards the ground. They don't need yeah, to you, I, If it were in another location, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't, see you wouldn't see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but if they can't, maybe they can do a camouflage. Per, perhaps they can, yeah, I guess, I guess if it's going to be in the front there, it, it, I don't know whether screening, you know, the trailer and wheels or putting up a 10-foot high fence is really going to make any difference. Because okay. you have such an elevation from yeah, Route 5 yeah, looking down into the site, you, you're going you're to just see everything there. Okay. So, but the, you know, a question as to whether or not uh, a tower deeper in the site should get some type of camouflage. I have a feeling that, that structurally these towers aren't really good candidates for that, you know, for the, the branch things or yeah. other things. So I, I kind of think they're going to, I don't think it's going to yeah. work. Um, but the, what was, what was your other point? It was a th Daniel raised the thing about the cells on the um, Holland Hill Tower. And then there was the 18 month, you know, we could ask them to specifically put on their application that this thing is dead in three years. Mm -hmm. by, by legislation, they, they're the timeless, yeah. but they yeah. could do that. Yeah. And they sort of told us they won't. Yeah. Okay. They, she was pretty clear. Yeah. It's temporary until it's no longer. Right. And then and right. she provided us the reasons why it's right. an AT&T's business right. interest on the assumption yeah. that, you know, AT&T's right. bus business interest will dictate all of their decisions. Well, I just encourage you to think through what your objections are and if any of them are remediable and put it in a, a letter or a phone call to yep. them. My objection is that uh, I don't want a tower in the village. There are alternative ways to provide that service if they wanted to spend the money and do permanent better coverage of AT&T in the village. But that isn't their goal, and they have sort of stated what their goal is. Their goal is to uh, do a quick temporary fix in anticipation of the big fix somewhere. And um, I think we're stuck because we have no choice. But and, hang on, and, and it's been waiting. Go well, ahead. I just, what I'm hearing from Chris is he feels the village is fairly well served, if not completely well served, and that putting such a tower up is 100% contrary to our zoning regulations. And as was indicated in the last hearing, they sort of went around you guys all together and uh, Cynthia has just said they didn't show any propensity to come through a zoning hearing. Why should you support it at all? It's an interesting point. I mean, good heavens. I mean, they're, they may put it up anyway, but hey, <laughs> at least you can say what you want to say. If they can't do this, and will they do something more say, expensive don't to do them? This, get some, you know, service outside the village where there isn't any, or where it's very yeah, poor. I, I don't think we have any power to do that. They, they can go to the okay, public well, service board and, and request, to... you know, they're requesting this tower at this location for their reasons, and whether we think those reasons are good or not uh, is irrelevant. You know, so we're going to get a, if we say nothing, we're going to get that. Tower. I don't think you have to say no. I think you can say, say no. No, no. no I, I mean, if yeah. we say no, I think we're going to get that tower. Right. So, so because I'm rather confident oh, that that tower, you know, they have, they're going to get a tower in Putney. I want a tower in Putney that I don't have to look at every day. So, so uh, to me, the lesser of the two evils is the 85 foot temporary tower deeper on the Baskerville site. And and I. I and because I do not think that that lawyer spoke the truth when she said there is no location on that site that doesn't interfere with the wetland, I'm calling her out. You know, she didn't actually say that. She said, I don't think there is, but I'd have to blah, 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 in order to say that. Can you send such an informative letter to the attorney and then the board can say no? And then let's see what happens? Well, the, the other thing... Mm -hmm. 
That's anyway. That's that's my sentiment. What, what do you mean in an informative letter? Well, you could just say, I think there is wrong on the site for what I suggested at the last mm -hmm. hearing. That's 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 that's, that's, what that's essentially what we're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, what I'd like is I'd like my little you know drawing yeah. that shows the two sites that I reconned and my Google drawing, which sort of shows them as an aerial view. I'd like that to go to the public service board. I mean, I think I think. You know, Anne's point is a valid one. You know, we could say we are not willing to support this unless these concepts are considered, in which case we would be willing to support it. I, you know, I, I mean, I, I, yeah, maybe I think stronger. that's a, sort of a stronger statement. Then, exactly. Please so, don't hit me again. Right. <laughs> so that might be that might be worth. You know, I, I sort of. I mean, I had initially stated as our support is contingent upon them looking at this, but maybe we say we can't support it because of these issues, but if these issues were addressed, we could support it. I, I, I don't know. Right. I, I think that's even happened. stronger. Yeah. So, can sure. I just sure. play a little bit of the, uh, this, this is my concern of me sitting at my desk and this tower not being here, and I have it in my head, whether it's just me thinking it or that this timeline of their their contract with Verizon is running really short. And I think that they know that. And that all of a sudden they are going to lose that. So that then means the village is not being served by AT&T, where they are being served now. Oh, so oh, I see. if there is not a tower here, once that contract goes up with these other ones that the village is being served by now, we're all then everybody loses. Not, and I understand what you're saying. This is not right. going to serve the people that are not being served right. now. But what about the loss of the people that are in the village right now? Well, I, so, I think I mean, really... Because, uh, I, I mean, it could be two years before they lose that with Verizon. I have no idea. Yeah, right. but it's, Cynthia, your point's really well taken, but it still makes me really grumpy I, that I know, there's this sense of urgency that that the need is so great yeah. that the that that everyone needs to live with uh, you know whatever it is 85 foot temporary tower in Putney because yeah. they need cell service. Mm -hmm. When when there are lots of ways to do it, it yeah. doesn't have to be last minute and it doesn't have to be with a temporary tower. Mm -hmm. But you know the process is such that I don't think we're going to be allowed to to get anything but this this temporary tower. Yeah. And I, I think also um, you know, again, the influence or the, the relationship between um, <coughs> AT&T and the Public Service Board, I'm guessing, is such that if they were to present that argument to the Public Service Board, regardless of our support, it just, you know, I think that, I think that your point primarily would be important to us as sort of voting against something that would serve the town if that were the time to right, come. Right, that's what, yeah, um, I mean. You know, the Public Service Board, if AT&T has a clear argument that that's what's gonna happen, the Public Service Board is gonna give them the permit regardless. So, regardless. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I, yeah. I understand and agree with the sentiment. I'm not sure we would end up being in, affected by it. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't I don't know, I, Who I knows? could go either way on this. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. a tough one. Howard? See, I know you haven't made a decision yet, but I thought she said something like, you know, when they put the application, the Public Service Board considers that site and that location. I don't think you can say we're okay with it as long as maybe they put it over there, because if they put it over there, it's an entirely different application. application. But they haven't I don't applied. know whether that's true. I, Didn't I she don't... say that? Like, if they get their permit, it's for, like they said, if they take... Yeah. A yes. piece of machinery off the tower, they have to get a whole new permit. Yes, somebody yeah. would have to change the site plan, you know, the, the, the AT&T, yeah. yes, right. they all have to change. But, right. but they haven't, as far as I understand, they have not submitted their application or site plan to the Public Service Board yet. Mm -hmm. So if we say X, Y, Z, and I call AT&T and say, look, this is where we're at with it, they, I think they have time to change that before they actually apply for the permit. Right. So I totally agree with you. You're not What's commenting it? on this plan and this picture. You would say, we want to see a new plan, we want to see a new picture, and then we'll yeah. Yeah. comment. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
Uh -huh. I don't know enough about the process to know whether that is sort of which one of those scenarios yeah, is correct. I, I mean, it, I, 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 I think you may be right, and it, I, I think somebody shed light on that at that last meeting, but I, I'd have to mm -hmm. review it to know. Just that. personally, I wouldn't expect to see another balloon flight. I mean, I kind of right. know what it looks like. It's, uh, we're talking about 600 feet. You know, further on the site, it just happens to be behind a building. You know, so uh, it's going to look very much the same from any one of those aerial photographs. But I don't days. know if they can. They may have to do it again. For the if application. they were to resubmit, right? Right, exactly. which is fine. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Right. Yeah. Uh, although, and somebody also pointed out, you know, the reality. This is the, the agreement between them and Greg Wilson. Greg may say, "Hey, you can use this location or not." You know, I I don't know. But, uh, would Chris Campany at the Wyndham Regional Commission be able to guide you as to approaching the Public Service Board? Possibly. I had a call from Wyndham Regional about this because they got notified of it and they said they don't typically get involved, get involved in cell tower that, unless they, we really, they really know want better. to know better. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm suggesting is that they might know what the procedures are and what I'm hearing is that people in this room are not clear about the exact procedures. Is well, that well, true? Uh, to, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. We have been asked by the, the procedure, the, the next step that we've been asked to do is very clear. There's a form that AT&T provided us, which they requested uh, a response to. So that, that form is a... Um, This may have been generated by the Don Rackman and Martin lawyer. I don't know whether it's a format that is you know, standard for all applications, but uh, we're being asked specifically to respond. Uh, we recommend approval of the project, that's a checkbox, or we recommend approval of the project by Vermont Public Service Board, but have the following concerns. We would like the uh, applicant to address in its position a petition for a certificate of public good, or we disapprove of the project for the following reasons. So those are three choices presented to us in this form. And, um, you know, because it is easy to structure our discussion and thinking, that's the way it's been uh, structured in my mind, is, is mm -hmm. we're meeting here tonight to prepare response. the response to this form. Yes. Could you just put number three and then say the concern is the siding on the uh, Basketville site? You attach an alternative uh, proposal, or something like that. Yeah, I, that, that, yeah that, may be, that would be stronger in my mind than to say we recommend it, but we really want it to be on the on you know back yeah. the other side because yeah. you know we're be, we're between a rock and a hard place here with this goal to provide you know 21st century digital communication to everybody in Vermont. Um, but it's a for-profit world, and there are so many opportunities to meet that service goal without having to deal with the eyesore of a tower in the village. And especially when we went to the trouble of adopting a bylaw that says, you know, figure out another way to do it in the village. Don't, don't put a tower of that size in the village. You know, put it in a steeple. You know, but get clever. Put, put a couple of them in town. I mean, I don't know. Not, okay. I don't know the alternatives, but I, there are solutions other than, than that. Don't forget, too, there is a public process for the Public Service Board, too, that people, you know, could there be involved is, there is, right. yeah, the, the people can get involved in that um, process once the application is, and they have a hearing for, mm -hmm. for that. So. so I'd be totally on board with saying it's disapproved because it's, no effort has been made to mitigate its visual impact, which is completely contrary to our zoning desires. And, uh, you know, we could just as a little aside, you know, slip my suggestion in that, you know, and by the way, you know, you certainly could mitigate it by putting the tower deeper on that site. So I'd be, I'd be up. And then, you know, I think, I, I think the other thing, I think it's valid to point out the, I, I mean, as long as we're going to make a statement here, you know, the, I, the 91 coverage, you know, to me, whether it's temporary or permanent, 
I think it's ridiculous that they're not addressing that. Um, you know, I think that that we could simply state, you know, does not add any coverage to the I-91 mm -hmm. corridor as it is placed, mm -hmm. which which we know if they put it at the fire station, it would, right. because they said that. Exactly. Um, and the so other the one is it, the, the take it or take it notion about the temporary. Exactly. Of this. Yeah. So Just and, and the absolute unwillingness to even address that. In that right. Effect, that, so that it's temporary, essentially forever. In, in, as as yeah. long as we need it, as long as we need it. <laughs> yeah. And the public service board agrees with that. So, so why you know. won't they put it at the fire station? Uh, they, the the a, parking lot is going there. That will impinge on it, and also the construction out of the parking ride will make it difficult. For and I was under the impression also that it didn't get as good coverage right in the village here, but I, I don't know whether that 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 was only my impression. I don't know, um, Carl. I'm interested in whether you have any comment on the safety of these things. Do you know know enough well, about it? To I don't think you're allowed to bring up the safety issue. Um, oh, okay. Because it's a federal preemption. Yeah. Um, there are stand, federal standards for RF exposure. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about my son who lives halfway up Kimball yeah. Hill and yeah. ran some numbers and basically there's something called a duty cycle, like how long the transmitter is on and how long it's off and I have no information about that. But yeah. if we say that the cell phone's duty cycle and a wireless router's duty mm -hmm. cycle are the same. His additional exposure will be equal to adding a wireless router to him 10 in, feet away. In his house. Right, <laughs> at that distance. And we guessed at, I think, 1,000 feet. If the tower is 150 feet from the apartments over Mountain Falls, it will be the equivalent of putting 10 extra wireless routers Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody's apartment. And that, even though it's well, well below the federal safety standard, it starts to bother me. Yeah. Yes. And I don't think I'd like that kind of exposure 24 7. So that's it. I can, if I can get some more information, I can get, get firmer figures. They'll all be well below the federal standards. But I don't but think I, I want 10 wireless routers in my bedroom. It, but, you know, it's like we got to suck it up. It's, it, that statement that you just made that it's below below the federal below standard the federal, right. and, and the, the, the and that cash. is what well, yeah well right who knows what that standard is or whether yeah. it's an appropriate standard but nevertheless it's what um, exists. yeah it becomes it's you know yeah. it's a, maybe an interesting in-house mm -hmm. discussion or for advocates to begin to explore and see if it's a you know in, inappropriate threshold but not a basis for for us to disagree. Time. Yeah. But it's it's great to have somebody that knows something. Yeah. <laughs> um, As opposed to the rest of us that don't know. Do anything. others that have not yet put in on this have feedback on to whether this is an appropriate route to disapprove based on these reasons? I think what everything we've discussed and the work that and a disapproving yeah. vote. Yeah. Steve? Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Scott? Absolutely. Okay. So can I make sure that we have this we'll statement? Kind of yes. So if you disapprove, we're, we're saying um, no effort has been made to mitigate its visual impact and completely contrary to our zoning bylaw. Is that one strong statement that I got that right? Do we want to clearly say no effort or or do we want to say it's our impression that there's no effort? Or do, oh. do we want to be PC about it at all or not? Or um, not yeah, it would, you'd not say it would appear that no effort. Okay. It would appear and do yeah. we want to reference our zoning laws? Because it, 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 it has been referenced in the application. Did you read their application? No. Because oh. she, re no, 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 she prepared it. But, you know, the. Should I say as stated in their, their notice? They have, they, recognized they have recognized, you know, as, as recognized, you know, in okay. their application. Um, it's it's a great lawyerly statement. Uh, <laughs> Do you read it to children? Because it's temporary. They wrote it. Yeah, it's, it's the the basic argument. Even though our temporary <laughs> is only five days. So. 
Could that be put in uh, our temporary uh, thing? Is there any history as to um, how, uh, as to the length of time that other temporary towers have gone in? You know, I, I, I intended to ask that, and I don't think I got there. I, I asked specifically, um, what does temporary mean? And she stated very clearly that temporary means until they remove it. Um, they talked about well, they talk about twelve really to eighteen months. Lebanon, yeah. 12 right, to 18 that's months. true. That's true. And also, the very fact of the desirability and the necessity of these towers in a number of different sites. They have a limited amount of them, yeah. so that they're they're but, a valuable tool. But and they was they're trying to sell the, the you know the disaster relief end of it, how it was uh, capable in restoring service in the New Pain area after I mean some right. other instances around the place. Yeah, so, no, I think that you know they need I think that. we recognize yeah. the value yeah. of them yeah. definitely. Yeah. Positive. Um, what I had intended to ask, which I didn't was, you know, we've heard the stories about the ones that are, have been there for 12 to 18 months. Are there any that have been there for six, eight, 10 years? Um, and, I, and I just didn't ask that, so I don't know the answer to that question, but um, I'd be surprised if there aren't at least a few of them somewhere, um, you know, maybe, maybe not. Especially the depreciation of um, these things is pretty high. Yeah. No, I mean, they're clearly motivated to not have it be temporary, but, um, you know, what does that mean when, deal A, B, and C all fall through uh, as to where to site. I, I, and we know from experience that trying to site a permanent tower in this town is not a simple prospect. So um, how that's going to go, we don't know. Or multiple towers. Or yeah, multiple really towers. Kind of or you know, coverage. Yeah. <laughs> We're a difficult to topographical area. Yeah. Just okay, so can I one? Yes. <laughs> I-91 coverage is not addressed in this proposal, and this the temporary tower will be serving the village population that has already has adequate service. But that I wouldn't no? want to necessarily yeah. say. Okay, so nothing about I-91? No, I think yeah. we do the okay. I-91, but the, not about the town having adequate, because I don't, Okay. I think some people have what they consider adequate service, <laughs> but it's clear that some, so yeah. just the I-91 coverage is not addressed in this proposal. And might be, Very? that might be addressed by a different village location, right? Yeah, but um, ultimately by a right, permanent Right, but our, we don't want to say that we want it in the village anywhere. Well, it might, be a, it might be better addressed by um, the location behind the firehouse. So, you know, but what's that bigger? Yeah, you, um, do you want, so right now I have I-91 coverage yeah. is not addressed in this proposal. In, improving I-91 coverage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or it might be better addressed by a tower location closer to I-91. But don't you think it would be worth mentioning Pitt's proposed locations in case they say, which they can, right, that we're just going to keep it there, at least say that it, that we I think what I'll do is attach that. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, yeah but I don't know how, I don't know what, but yeah, you, could, you could defer to me, you know, in the opinion of uh, Phil Bannister, uh, you know, no titles. <laughs> um, alternative sites exist, and I don't know whether you, we want to yeah. come to some agreement that we think a tower on one of those sites would be more acceptable. I, I think we're going to get a tower, and I'd rather see it hidden, so I don't know yeah. how, how best to address I guess the, the I-91 I issue, presumably pushing it back there is, you know, if anything, going to reduce the coverage on 91 as opposed to being right there. But from that map from what and from their comments, it appeared that it really wasn't going to change the I-91 coverage at all no. anyway. And a, little, a, a little bit, maybe. Pointing out to but, them that if they're cooperative at this point, if at a later date they do apply for a permanent installation in the village and perhaps on that site even, you know, be having a willing landlord to, you know, lease the land and whatnot. Um, that they might have a, might, a, a more positive experience in going through the process. It might be I mean, that it's just, you said it's, yeah, I don't know. Work with well, us, I don't know how, I, you know, if we're, if we're saying thumbs down, I don't know how to um, 
mine was a very conciliatory response going, you know, I mean, are you sure you can't just put it, you know, over here a little bit? It would be better. So um, I, I don't know how to incorporate my recommendations or my awareness that uh, there are alternatives within a couple hundred feet. Well, that's... he spoke about it at the, at the meeting. I think that that's something that we can, I guess the question is how detailed, I mean, we're, we're right. wanting a strong statement of we disapprove of this because of, of, these of this reasons. specific site right. plan, like Howard said, I think this response is very specific to the plan we have in front but of us. Then, then and the, then we uh, disapprove because we... No. And we believe... One approach might be just send, if you're willing, just send my stuff to AT&T. And you also and, say and you not believe. to the public service. Well, this actually goes back to the lawyer. This. Okay. Well, then just you know, without referencing it, just in the envelope, you know, say, well, Phil, you know, Phil Bannister looked at it and he felt pretty strong that it's a, you yeah. know, body body, and he, he, you know, here, here are a couple of drawings he did, really? but it wouldn't necessarily have to appear as the uh, response from the planning commission or select board on that. Your, your yeah. statement, we believe that alternative sites exist. I thought was very succinct. And to the point. Okay, but read, read that sentence again, the Sophia. First one that uh, yeah, about the current site. I changed it to no effort to. It would appear that little effort has been made to mitigate its visual impact and is contrary to our bylaws, our zoning bylaws. And then I put a note as recognized in the notice from AT&T. I, I think that we should say um, mitigate visual impact within the chosen site because that you know I mean they did look at other sites around town um, and and I think that we all are probably relatively comfortable being with it being on the Baskerville site if it were relocated back there I mean you know uh, where else in town do we have, you know, the fire department, they had their reasons for those not working. Where else did they look? The central school. They looked out at the town garage. And town garage, right. Um, central school. I get, I get, I, I, I'm not sure. I, that might have been a misstatement. I'm not sure they did look at that. Get up the right now. ones on the children. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about the signal moving. That was a good idea. You, you don't think that's a good idea? 85 millimeter towers. Let's just put it right in the kindergarten classroom. <laughs> Carl, you have another question? Still or still comment? <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a third coverage map in the back of the town hall. And the center of that coverage almost seems to be somewhere on the hill up behind Ellis Derrick's garage. Sorry, say that again? There's a third coverage map. All right. See which one you're talking about, Carl? You're the, that, the, all the patches of different colors is what you're talking about. Oh, the propagation map? Yeah. Right, the propagation map. They're, they're further in, okay. this is sort of backwards. This is Holland Hill. All right. But this third map, um, as near as Goddard and I could figure out, that is somewhere up behind Ellis Derry's garage. Yeah. Is that, has anybody heard anything about that? Because that may be their, their proposed permanent site. That yeah. map wasn't presented at the, at the hearing. This one wasn't. Hmm. Right. Oh, interesting. Current AT and T. So that's all I can think of for where they might want to put a a permanent tower. It would sure be a lot better location coverage wise.
this would be indicated on this map if it's, I, I wouldn't think it would have to do with future. Well, it says proposed but, coverage. Right, future coverage and future but but current coverage. Oh, proposed AT and cover. Oh, so, I, I see. Okay. Yeah, that's huh. that's all. Interesting. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the one that indicates where it, this is the one that's at the Basketville site, right. and then this is. You're right. This was not at the other meeting, which mm -hmm. does appear to change the coverage in Putney pretty Quite significantly. Yeah. 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 And it would pick up the interstate coverage. Yeah. Huh. I wonder why they discarded it. You know, he got up and talked us through all of his options and why some most and nothing else worked, but he never mentioned that. Yeah. 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 I'm very unhappy, but why wouldn't they talk about it if it looks so good? Um, I, it may be, I mean, that she basically said they weren't in a position to comment on right. permanent, permanent sites. sites. Yeah. Um, you know, it may be that for whatever reason this, you know, whether it was by mistake or just sort of irrelevant to the discussion we were having the other night, because it's a permanent, not a temporary, but. Hmm. Yeah, right. Um, Boy, that's a huge coverage map. Okay, and um, I guess I'm sort of going back to my original comment now that Kyle's here, maybe he could answer this. But you were saying about the level of whatever it is that we don't like. Oh. Uh, the radio, radio frequency exposure. Radio frequency exposure. That was just for this particular tower that you're looking at? Right, assuming it's 150 feet from Mount Falls. Okay, so would that be the only tower that would have an effect? I mean, the, I mean, is there anything existing now? But I'm saying, <coughs> for safety, you find a cumulative number. That's the strongest one. We pick up RF from everything. You know, if you can get NPR on your home radio, that right. means there's some RF from their tower there. When you hold um, off the antenna, you get better reception. Yeah. yeah, and then you're going into a slightly stronger area, but that is that would by far be the strongest, most constant source of exposure. I wouldn't bother mm -hmm. looking okay. at the other stuff. Okay. okay, so Cynthia. Okay, hold on. Let's see. I've got something. Visual impact within the chosen site. It would be our desire for AT and T to find an alternate location for the temporary tower. If they move ahead with the public service board application on the proposed site. We would like to see it move to a different location within that site. See attached map. If you're willing to do that, yeah. I mean, because it is what that's reasonable. That's my opinion. That, I mean, yeah. we're we're disapproving of it because of this. And, but and, and here's the alternative we should get yeah. that we probably don't have much. Yeah. 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 Is well, that that sounds reasonable? Yeah. Yeah. Does that cover all those things that? Yeah. And so are we agreeing not to raise the 91? No, I think we should raise the 91 issue. I think we, sh we should say, you know, <coughs> we are also concerned that this tower does not improve coverage on I-91. Should, does it make sense to offer to have Pitt walk some of these sites with their uh, engineer, their oh, site it, it, engineer? It's so, no, the drawings are, they're, they're, they're very simple little drawings. Self-explanatory. Okay. Um, also concerned that this. Well, you concerned that this location does not <coughs> either address coverage on I ninety one or improve coverage on I ninety one. Okay. Um, and then, uh, and for me, finally, um, <laughs> we would. We are concerned about the um, time frame of this temporary tower. You know, ha the about the potential long-term uh, presence in our presence. Some, some yeah. of our We'd like to see some willingness, <coughs> perhaps review once every year or. Something with us, you know. Although we, although we don't have any, we have no power. <laughs> right, once PSB says yes. I understand because that. Because we have concerns that this is not going to be necessary, not necessarily right. temporary in yeah. our mind. Right, exactly. We're concerned. Yeah. But, you know. 
So is it fully drafted? Do we have something we can well, do we if need I to can read my handwriting tomorrow when I sit down to do But do we need to end. move this and vote on it? I think that you yes. You okay. need to vote on you know that that jointly so the planning commission and this I mean I don't know how Do we need to have it fully drafted or can or are you all comfortable with it being moved and voted on yes. um, and and uh, uh, I will come and sign it when it's been appropriately worded. Is that? Yeah, I think you may need to just t tweak your, okay. you know, a, a, a word or two. But the gist of it is very clear. Yeah, the three po the three points are made, and that's what we're concerned about. Any other points we want in there? Three points or two points? Three. Three. I ninety one the temporary. And the location yeah, within the, the site. Location, yeah. location, location. <laughs> or lack thereof. <laughs> <laughs> and is the planning commission, uh, this form gives an opportunity, the town of Putney check one planning commission or select board. Um, I, I think that it would be stronger if we check both. Acted, acted, yeah, that both planning commission and select board. Okay. I, uh, was this warned as a select board meeting? No, it was no, a joint meeting. Okay. So why don't, I, I think we can vote on it jointly. Oh, well, or, I was going to just ask the planning commission to, for a vote. That's fine. So yeah. then we would vote. We, yeah, so we vote so independently. The, the, the proposal is, Cynthia's three points. Are you in agreement with them? Yes. Yes, yes. okay, and I also am. Mm -hmm. You're saying an affirmative from the planning commission. Okay. Uh, so, um, do you want to just review it one more time, and then we'll and then we can move it. Okay, so there is. We the the motion would be that we disapprove, disapprove. of the follow project for the following reasons. Yeah, you want me to review what I said? Yeah. For what I wrote. Um, it would appear that little effort has been made to mitigate its visual impact within the chosen site. It would be our desire for AT and T to find an alternate location for the temporary tower. If they move ahead with the PSB application on the proposed site, we would like to see it move to a different location within that site. Um, also, con we are also concerned that this location does not address or improve coverage for I-91. And we are concerned about the potential um, Longevity. Yeah, the we are concerned about duration. Is that the a potential of it being a long-term presence, in, presence the in the town, not having an end date to the to the. To be yeah, I got to clean it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, always proud of the bladder. Just attach it. I'll attach it. Okay. Yeah, and then attaching to seeing all of this. Mm -hmm proposed alternative locations within that site. That's, I'll call myself some of that photo. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Second, yes. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to disapprove of the um, project, uh, uh, well, disapprove of support for the project of AT&T placing a, a temporary tower on the Basketville site for the aforementioned reasons. Um, if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So disapproved. <laughs> so disapproved. For Nix's decision. <laughs> uh, you know, that having been said, we would like to make it clear that we all are very interested in having better cell coverage in both the village and the town. And, uh, uh, that's a nice way to close that letter. We can look at whether it fits yeah. in there. Yeah. The only other thing I wanted to say is I did go to the Public Service Board website today. They have a citizen's guide to the process. Mm -hmm. If anybody's interested in being a part of the process, if AT&T moves ahead with the um, application, it's a 
I have it in my office if anybody wants to look at it, but it's, you know, it doesn't give you everything, but it's kind of, it's pretty user friendly. Kill your what was that? Not kill your so. um, it looked to me like they might hold them, I don't know that for sure. It said something about holding them in the county. Oh, oh in the relevant county. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that for sure. I quickly skimmed over it. I'd like to raise the issue that this is an agricultural uh, community and that we are concerned about food security and that does depend upon honeybees being able to um, pollinate crops and uh, there are studies from India and Switzerland and Germany that indicate that um, hive collapse is based upon cell tower interference with the honeybees being able to get back to their home. Thank you for that comment. It's disturbing. I don't, I don't you know, no. Well, I think we ought to be, I think we ought to be more aware of some of these things, yeah. particularly when it concerns our food supply. I haven't heard yet of the bee drones that are going to be out there, but I'm assuming that pollinating drones are a thing of the future. Well, I have uh, pollinating drones, yes, the, the, the mechanical ones. I, I would assume that if they aren't already there, I'm sure they're coming our way soon. But I do have a, a beehive. Do you? That's and good. So that's within <coughs> the mileage of the cell tower. Yeah. All right. Duly noted. Point of information. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much, Board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I will put my Thank signature you. on it. Yeah, thanks. Are you in Germany? Yes. As you Are you in Germany, Tom? Are you in Germany? Oh, yes. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Yes, adjourn. That's, that's